Okay, welcome to uh, lesson B, the language of physics. What we're going to do in this lesson is we're going to present various ways of summarizing data, including uh, tables, graphs, and equations. We're going to use, uh, uh, learn how to use dimensional analysis to check the validity of expressions and introduce uh, estimation procedures. Uh, by the end of this lesson, or learning targets, then you, you should be able to uh, interpret data in, in tables and graphs and recognize equations that summarize data. And we're going to be working on that kind of skill thing all year long. Um, you want to be able to distinguish between uh, conventions for abbreviating units and quantities, which means we're, we want to be able to, uh, we, you're going to want to know what the units are that we use in physics regularly. Uh, and uh, you want to be able to use dimensional analysis to check the validity of equations. So we're going to uh, talk about a, a process called dimensional analysis. And if you take in the uh, uh, chemistry at all, uh, you uh, probably work quite a bit with dimensional analysis. And then uh, finally perform order of magnitude calculations. So here we go. So I often say physics is just math with a purpose, OK? Uh, our purpose being to explain the rules of the universe. and uh, we use mathematics as a model to understand uh, what's happening. The mathematics is the, the language of physics, okay? And so we're going to be doing a, a fair amount of that throughout the year. So uh, just as some physicists create simplified models to better understand the real world, we use the, the tools of mathematics to analyze and summarize observations that we make, okay? So tables, graphs, and equations can make that data easier to understand. For example, say we have a, an experiment where here we have dropped uh, a ping pong ball and a golf ball at the same time. They're two different masses, so we can, you know, probably uh, demonstrating uh, how masses will fall at the same rate, okay? Uh, from this, then, a data table was constructed showing the distance each ball falls in uh, the amount of time. So we have the time listed here, distance the golf ball falls, distance the table tennis ball falls, so the ping pong ball. So this is measured in seconds. Here we're measured in centimeters and centimeters. Okay, And as what we can see from this table is that each uh, for each time interval, they're falling basically the same distance here. There's no separation really between uh, the, ball, the golf ball and the, and the ping pong ball. Okay. So what we can, that, you know, a table then really puts that data out there and, and makes it readable. And to make it even more readable and understandable, we can use a graph. A graph is nothing more than a picture of that data. Okay, so we can see from this graph that we've got uh, uh, distance over here. We've got time listed here. This is called a distance time graph or a position time graph. And what we're seeing is that the trend of that data is this curved line here. So this, this graph gives us a, a, a convenient way to summarize the data and indicate the relationship between uh, the time an object has been falling and the distance that it's falling. Okay. So then kind of the, the next step of this would be to uh, take this graph and take the information that we get from this graph and uh, come up with some sort of mathematical representation uh, showing us the relationship between distance uh, the balls have fallen, and time. And so when we do that, we end up getting a, an equation, something like this, where the, our, our change in position here is equal to 4.9, this 4.9 constant, uh, times uh, the time of fall squared. So the square of the time of the fall. So that's kind of what we're going to do with, uh, with when we come up with graphs, is figure out ways to use the mathematical representation shown in that graph to make more sense. And then uh, what we're going to want to do is, is come up with um, symbols that we can use instead of making big long word equations, of course. We want symbols to be able to um, abbreviate what those things mean. So change in position. Anytime uh, we want to talk about a change in something, we're going to use the mathematical symbol delta. Okay, this is a, the Greek letter delta, and it means change in. So position, uh, these things are the, the falling. So our, our position here is um, 
are on our y axis, right? So we're looking at the change in position, that's the y, okay? So we then we have 4.9, and we're going to abbreviate our, our time then, because it's a time interval where our time starts at zero down here uh, and, and uh, goes up from there. Um, we'll again use change in time squared. So what we end up with here is a, an equation giving us the relationship shown in this graph. So the equations that we're going to work with throughout the year are, are there to just indicate physical relationships between one thing or another. Okay, uh, as far as um, our conventions used, uh, you know, if we're trying to talk about change in position, our symbol would be a delta x or delta y. Uh, if we're going to talk about a time interval, we use a t. If we're going to talk about mass, we use m, um, and then we have units. Okay, so these these symbols here, these are quantities. Okay, and then these are uh, units. All these quantities require units to go with them. Okay, so the the change in position unit that we the standard unit we use is a meter. Uh, for time interval, the standard unit we use is seconds. For mass, the standard unit we use is kilograms. Okay, so these things here, these three mass uh, meters, seconds, and kilograms are our standard units that we use for those quantities. Anytime we're given a problem then that uh, gives us these quantities, these, these quantities in some other unit, we have to convert to our standard units in order to solve that problem. So if we're given an, a, a problem where we're given a change in position in kilometers, we first have to convert to meters in order to uh, solve that problem, which we talked about previously. Okay, so evaluating physics expressions is going to be a very important skill uh, for you to, to be able to do in order to be successful in physics. Uh, with dimensional analysis, that's really when we're converting units to other units, okay? Uh, and sometimes we, we, the unit conversions can get a little bit complicated, so d using dimensional analysis will, will help us out with that. Uh, so, for example, how many inches are in six meters? Okay, so if we, you know, get up with a, uh, an answer of six meters in some problem, uh, we want to be able to make sense of that in our own mind, so we may convert to inches so we have an understanding in our, in our mind, because inches is the system of measurement we're used to using. Uh, uh, we want to understand what six meters is, so we convert from six meters into inches. So how do we do that? Well, with dimensional analysis, we always want to kind of start with whatever quantity we're given, right? So we're, we're told we start with six meters, right? And we want to convert this to inches. So uh, we look at our uh, conversion chart here. We see that there are 39.4 inches in one meter. Okay, so now what we have here is we have a, a, a number that's basically on top over here, a number on top here, and a, a one on the bottom. So these meters, the units meters, will cancel out. Okay, and so we're going to take 6 times 39.4, and we end up with 236.4 inches is our answer. Okay. Now, uh, with dimensional analysis, say we wanted to go back the other direction, right? So we started out. Yay, how many meters are in 236.4 inches, right? Um, so in this case, you know, one meter, every uh, 39.4 inches, okay? So now notice this time our, our units that cancel, inches here, and then we have a number on, on top here, number on bottom there. So anytime we have a number on top there, number bottom there, that's a division. And uh, we'd end up, of course, with uh, an answer of 6 meters. So 236.4 divided by 39.4 is, is uh, 6 meters. You know, clearly this is, you know, an easy example. Uh, things can get a little bit more complicated. Just wanted to kind of go over dimensional analysis with you before moving uh, manipulating formulas algebraically. This is a skill that's really important in physics, to be able to take a, an equation and change it around to solve for a, 
to see how we would solve for a specific variable. So we end up having to put only like one one set of equa one equation into our calculator. Okay. <clears throat> so this here is a an actual equation that we will use um, very shortly in our in our next unit. In fact, uh, and what we want to do is we want to solve for this quantity a right here, which stands for acceleration. So in, in order to do that, all we have to do is manipulate this formula algebraically, and uh, here's what we'd get. So we start out with v squared equals, and, uh, this is pronounced v naught or, or v sub zero. So v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a times x minus x naught. Okay? So if we want to solve for a, what we're going to do is uh, manipulate this algebraically. So we go v squared. We can subtract the v naught squared from both sides, okay, giving us this right here. Okay, so our next step in this and so is we want to be able to isolate um, the a, of course. So we're going to divide the the x minus x naught out of there, and so we'd end up with v squared minus v naught squared over x minus uh, x naught equals two a. Okay. And now, uh, in order to get rid of the 2 onto the, on uh, this side over here, we want to uh, divide by 2. And so we end up with an expression that a equals v squared minus v naught squared over 2 times x minus x naught. So this is our expression for a, and that's how we uh, go about solving uh, formulas algebraically.